I'm not negotiating with myself. Yeah. The deal was already made. The deal was made. When I set out at the beginning of the summer, I said, this is the training plan I'm doing. I signed that contract with myself. I'm doing it. You know, throughout the, that process, you'll start talking to yourself like, man, I gotta, I think I need to, maybe if we, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's non-negotiable. Yeah. <laughs> right. So if you can hear me, this is gonna be fucking cool. Or you wanna be in this position when you're outstretched like that. First couple of sets, you just wanna get some fucking blood into the area, contract the muscle tissue. That whole blood thing is actually a wild statement because there's a blood always running around our body. But actually, contracting and relaxing and bringing it in and forth can create that neurological stimulation. That's what you're looking for. None of that fucking blood in the area. I don't even know why I said it. Fucking old school bodybuilding shit. Now with this as well, don't stand up too right. Like you want to be in a situation where you're bending forward slightly, but your not, arms are not above your head. Your arms are above your head. You're not exactly working the lats, which I'll explain in a different exercise. But being in this situation now, arms stretched to a point like this, pull it into the hips. Thinking about the elbows as opposed to the hands, most important. So when you're ready to go, cool. Next most important thing is find your fucking work set. Make sure that you're working hard. So I'm gonna look back at my notes, which is always great on progress. When you look back at the notes, you're able to get that point of, of reference to, to go forward. Right, time for a working set. Let's fucking go for it, right? 15 reps. Last time I got 14. Take the tension, lightly bend forwards, and control that shit. Let's go. Smooth. Stop. Drive. Two. Feel like I'm in the NFL. Mic up camp. <laughs> Smooth. Cool. That was. Stop. Okay. okay, now you're burning. <clears throat> Speed and movement. If it doesn't slow down, you can keep on going. Come on, four. <clears throat> <clears throat> record your weights it's always in there now if you with autonomy you use your own uh, app but I don't have the own app I just use your notes because I'm fucking old school so it's in there you track every single weight at least we know we're making progress Come on. So next up we've got the cable stack the cable pull down but in a different variation because when you're coming from above, you don't really hit the lats as well as you should do. If you come from this angle with this, with this high up cable, you can pull down into your hips of where the lat really, really works. Anything above the head here, it doesn't really work the lats the way that it should do, that a lot of people think about. So when you come from this angle, chest supported, you can really pull down into the hip where that's gonna be the best movement. So that's gonna be the best movement pattern for lats because it trans, it, in a way, lats do not work up and down. They work more in a transverse diagonal fashion, so you can hit the most out of them with the elbows going to the hip. So don't make that mistake. If you're doing pull downs, either lean back slowly or lean back so that you're not upright, you're actually in a more forward position for your diagonally going upwards. All right, let's hit a fucking working set on this bad boy. As I said, this is getting into its hardest position, but also, I've got no fucking straps. So it's gonna be fucking difficult. Elbow, come on. Elbow down, chest up. <clears throat> into the pocket. <clears throat> Control, drive. Control. <clears throat> Three, come on. Now, and this mount. Come on. Straddle. Oh yeah, ride the pony. You should see my lap be able to crunch down to the side there. Can 
our tunes in here today, fucking hell. Out from Deltas. Come on. So the, port, the lat dominant row. So the differences between the two of how you really attach to get those lats is is all about where the elbow positioning is. Go too high, it's going to be posterior, uh, posterior delt and upper back. You go low, that's where the lats are going to be. So middle of the body, really drive down low, and that's going to where you're going to be able to hit those lats as best as possible. But all machines are made differently, so it's not always going to be the case of they're really good and effective. But this exercise is actually really, really good. And um, so. I'm going to show you how you keep it in. It double arm this time, so it's nothing crazy, but it's going to be really easy to hit the muscle groups you get in that. Stretch, stretch. One more, come on. Stretch. No, I'm good. Stop it. Okay. So you're gonna be able to see it from behind now. Oh, All right, let's go. Come from behind. nightmare so what do straps do well effectively the biggest weakest link when any type of pulling exercises is going to be your grip strength as much as we like it or not they're just smaller muscle groups around here to be able to grip on so what you need to do is just effectively strap up and wrap up which is the straps that go out in an eight figure strap them around the bar and then they'll give you that extra support when the grip is really lacking and then you'll be able to lift more weight for more reps without these getting in the way. Now, if you're a fucking strong man and you want to be this really big box who never uses straps, do it. But you're leaving short term results on the table for the idea that you might actually get some results later down the line. But it's not always the case. Um, use the straps and use them well. And then if you want to work on grip strength, which I don't know why you'd want to practice hanging off a cliff or something like that. But if you want to practice grip strength later down the line, you can do. But get stronger and get big first by not use, not limiting yourself to your weakest links. All right, 45 reps on a fucking lat machine. But the thing is, if you don't get it in the right position, it's foot. These little nodules here show you where your shoulders should be because the rotation of this rotates around here. So if your shoulder's not in this position, it's not doing the thing that the shoulders should do. So we need our shoulders at the same level. So I'm too high here. Now, I'm in level with the shoulders, which means that when I rotate, I'll be able to go up as high as possible and as best as possible. So, that's your fucking lesson for today on how to get massive delts just like me. All right, let's fucking do it. Fucking 45 reps, suck my dick, Christian. So it's quite boring at the beginning, but then it gets really fucking hard straight away. Oh, here we go. 
Did I mention it's a terrible machine for fucking resistance profile? Yeah. Oh fuck. Right, oh by the way, I'm not doing it in one go, you fucking animals. Dum, dum, dum. I don't know if you can hear the music in here, but I wish I wasn't filming because I'd be on a fucking two-step right now. Absolutely fucking going for it. Who's got the bag? Who's got the bag? Who's got the bag? Hey, hey. Right, let's fucking go for it. Come on. More in the... Hey. I don't know if you can see, but hopefully you can pick up. There's a guy, a white guy, in a basketball uh, an American football jersey in the background with a fucking do-rag on, and he's white. What's going on here, son? What? What's going on here? Oh, fuck. But I please, hopefully you can see it in the background. I'm going to zoom in if you can, but what is he doing? He's having an identity crisis. Dubai makes absolute, well, makes knobheads even more knobheads. And people lost in their own identity. Guys in do-rags, in NFL shirts. White guys specifically. Hey, he's got no cornrows to protect, has he? What's he doing, son? <gasps> Probably drives a fucking 4 before. F50 or 40, F45 or whatever it's called. <sighs> All right, 10 more to go. We have like 10, 15 seconds in between so that you can actually get more out of it. I would have hit failure about a fucking week ago. So, bit of rest, go again, bit of rest, go again, bit of rest, go again. It's how you get the load a little bit higher than it was before. Let's get him. And the beat's about to drop, so we like it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah. DC 10 vibes. Oh. Ah. Fucking cunt. Three more to go. Oh, here we go. Three more to go. Oh, take that. Alright, an old little bicep curl. Cue this one. Slight little incline on the back. Keep the elbows close. Get down to that fucking bottom position. Don't let that move too forward too much. Four sets of these fucking cuts as well. <laughs> Try second at the bottom. Back up. Just challenging it in the short, in the medium position. If we, if we look at the bicep curl, you want to challenge it in three positions: the stretch position, the, the medium position, and then that short position. Obviously, different exercises do different ones, so don't try and do it all in one fucking exercise. Jesus Christ! But trying to get three different exercises, one for each of the different positions over the course of your week, is really fucking the right way to go about it. Uh, something like a preacher curl. A dumbbell curl like this, and then something like a D-handle cable uh, drag curl. You hit all those three areas. You're hitting the bicep in all three different ranges, which effectively can create more growth uh, and makes you stronger across the whole of the ranges for everything else as well. So it's really fucking useful. And uh, now we've got waffling again. We've got to go again. And hopefully I'm looking fucking juicy as fuck. Oh my god, I'm a pussy. 
a very close angle there, sorry lads. I want to explain something as I've done this set. Watch my elbow position and as I'm coming across with the dumbbell a little bit. Fuck's sake. So, what did I mean about bringing the elbow? When my hands are out like this, my hands are coming in slightly. It's called a carrying angle. Everyone's elbow has a carrying angle, whether it's out with like this, or it has like a, the, the, the bottom part of the arm and the upper part of the arm are not completely straight all of the time. Which means that when you're doing exercises like a bicep curl, you want to be in the straightest position possible for your bicep. But for me, when I'm in this position like this, when I bring up straight, my arms come across. So if I try to stay out there, I'd just be twisting my whole my body, my whole of my shoulder be fucked. And that's what a lot of people do, they twist their fucking elbows or the shoulders out to the side with the like, fuck it, I need to stay straight. Whereas actually, just let that come across. And that'll be much better if that's the way that your shoulder rolls, like mine does, my elbow runs in an inward pattern. If you're the same as me, do it as a slight uh, incline or do it as a slight diagonal, which may hit your bicep more, it may not, and you just need to find the angle right for you, but it's so common to see just people fuck up their elbows doing bicep curls. Alright, fucking single arm pull down. Pull up, bicep, tricep extension. Not the best uh, attachment for it, but get underneath, get locked in, hold on to the side. Get your elbow to the side of the body, fucking pull it down. Easy, simple, slow, pull, easy. Slow. You want to be in line with the body so that you're coming in a straight line down. Oh, I got it. And you're getting that tricep really, really pulling it. Yeah. And you always want to do a warm up set before so you get in the right movement. You feel the right tricep, keep the shoulders locked in, it'll be good. And then you'd be pulling down here. So, easy done on that one. Let's go to work. 15, 20 reps on this motherfucker. Fuck's sake. And if you lean over, you'll get more weight into that tricep, into the right hand side of your body. Lean over, pull it, tricep. You don't need to go all the way up because if you move your elbow, you compromise the tricep. So keep the elbow backwards. Come on. So that was session done and dusted. We're ready and going now. Back to the O2. I think I'm recording a podcast. And then we, after the podcast, we are going to the physio. So that's going to be fucking sick. Physique is not terrible at all. It's not exactly the best, but we'll take it. I think I woke up at 158 this morning, which is... Uh, well, I was 170, 182 pounds, I think, when I was building, so we're back down again. So it's going well. Uh, 
couple more weeks on the diet and then we'll be uh, back in the building phase, I think. Physio time. So this is my second physio appointment with Mariam. Uh, first one was really, really good. Uh, we're just trying to explore new options. Obviously, I've been working with that John and Anil for a little while, but the problem with those guys is with John specifically, he just does more like uh, therapeutic modalities and like pain management side of things. So to be able to get a true physio, it was not something that I could get there because Anil was traveling and stuff like that. So getting one from his recommendation, I think it just, we need to explore different options. Got a, uh, an appointment with uh, Paul, the surgeon, on Thursday uh, which hopefully will uh, indicate some better things and then outside of that we just have to keep finding new options to kind of go down the route of I know from what she gave me this week there's been very little improvement and actually probably made it worse so we need to go back and rethink things not sure if she's gonna allow me to video in there but hopefully I will if not I'll get the uh, the take afterwards but you just gotta keep trying stuff you know this isn't getting any better anytime soon it's a long journey here so we'll see how it goes and um, see what she can come up with The physio, unfortunately, I didn't film him. Uh, as I was going in, I was like, I kind of want to see what this is going on and be present in the moment, especially with all the knee stuff that's going on and whether it's going to be effective or not. So uh, I didn't film it. But the prognosis was basically, prognosis was that I, I am uh, still not really happy. Well, the knee is still really not that happy when it comes to being in a uh, resistance perspective in terms of like hamstring curl, any type of weight that's loaded on the back of the knee. It's not really doing its thing in terms of being playing by ball. It's always hurting. So we've kind of opted to move away from that kind of stuff uh, and just focus on the things that I can do, which is the calf raise, the contraction, and move away from any type of resistance stuff. Um, we did a few things in there which are quite interesting, which is like compressing the calf and like com uh, with wraps and draining the, the calf and, and draining the knee full of fluid, which seems to work. I've got like veins on my knees already, like from all where the fluids kind of dropped off. Even from just that, the, the range of motion increased and just walking has become a little bit easier as well. So it's a long-term process. Nothing groundbreaking and unfortunately, like fat loss, like nothing groundbreaking happens in a day or two or seven or 14. It's like... It's so the compound over the weeks now, we're like week number 12, 13 or whatever it is, but maybe one, two weeks worth of physio. So I need six weeks to eight weeks of this to see how it really goes. Um, so not any short term uh, relief, unfortunately at the moment, but it's better than nothing. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the run throughs today of the training stuff. Hopefully if you like that style, I'm gonna do a lot more of it because there's a lot up here that a lot of people might take value from. It's just like sometimes when you're recording, you're filming, you just like, let's get the content, let's get the video instead of actually like talking through it. So hopefully you really, really like that because I like doing it anyway. So if it turns out really good, and we'll do more of it and you see benefit in trying to like basically go through all my exercises that I'm doing and tell you how to perform it really, really well, then it could be of use towards your building your own muscle, building as much strength as you can, keep it injury free in the gym. So it's going to be really, really good. So guys, stay tuned for another episode of that. Like, subscribe, comment, do what you need to do to get me some likes, please. Uh, I would say that, you know, we've been doing it now, what, six months of vlogging, maybe nearly enough, eight months, nine months of vlogging. Uh, we need to get those views in. We need to get the subscribers. We need to kind of let people know about the fucking shit that i'm doing and also uh you know the value that is presenting each and every time so guys if you can share this pod share this youtube just subscribe like and try and drive those things up so that we can get more people watching it see if people like it and then as we go into comp prep as we get out of the knee rehab stuff and move into like proper leg building muscle that'd be fucking amazing i'm going to share more tips and tricks and everything uh, for you guys so guys have a lovely day and chat soon